One of the biggest problems a society faces today is that of climate change. In particular, the role of the emissions of carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels and how these gases are accumulating in the atmosphere and warming our planet. Researchers from the CSIR run the Southern Ocean Carbon and Climate Observatory, which is a South African-born science program supported by the Department of Science and Innovation in support of the Global Change Grand Challenge and the Marine and Antarctic Research Strategy. Everybody thinks you know, that the trees in the Northern Hemisphere and these huge forests have a big role to play in sort of help mitigating and the impacts of this CO2, the oceans actually play a much bigger role, and the Southern Ocean in particular. The Southern Ocean takes up 25% of man-made CO2 emissions that are emitted into the atmosphere. That's a quarter of all CO2 emissions put into the atmosphere the Southern Ocean is taking up, as well as 70% of the excess heat that is generated by the accumulation of those emissions in the atmosphere. So understanding the Southern Ocean, how it works, why it does such a good job of taking up this excess CO2 is really important and what the sort of tipping points are on the ability of the Southern Ocean to keep on doing that in a climate that's changing. SOCO was sort of developed to try and look at that. We've taken advantage of our geographical positioning so we kind of have decided to take a multidisciplinary approach to trying to understand the Southern Ocean. Annually, researchers deploy gliders in the sub-Antarctic Ocean to measure stratification or the vertical layering of the ocean. By using high-res ocean biogeochemical models, scientists are able to investigate physical and biogeochemical mechanisms that may explain the sensitivity of the Southern Ocean carbon cycle to climate change. Ocean gliders are kind of a bit like drones that you see in the atmosphere all the time. They are profiling the ocean. Inside the glider, they can change their buoyancy. So the glider, which looks a bit like a plane, makes itself heavier so that it sinks and it makes itself lighter so it rises. So the glider does these yo's and it goes down to a thousand meters depth. When it comes back to the surface, it has a iridium mast, which is essentially it has a GPS on it. It tells us where it is and it sends some data back to us. So we are able to then send some commands and return to it and say, please sample like this or sample like that. Gliders have multiple different sensors on them, which is great because it means that we can look at multiple different processes happening simultaneously together. Learnings from the research are used to support the National Research Consortium that is developing a South African Earth Systems model with a special focus on improving climate projections in the Southern Hemisphere. Beyond the science and technology, SOCO offers young South African scientists from historically disadvantaged institutions a stimulating, challenging and inspiring platform from where to build these skills in numerical modeling, machine learning, big data science and analyzing complex systems in order to grow experts in this field. Be able to ask good, good questions. I think that that's what science is about, because knowledge is everywhere. You know? I think that being able to, to distill what's a good question and what's not a good question, and when you're faced with a complex problem, where do you start and, and how do you think about it? So I think there's been a sort of a intellectual development about you know, how to think about questions and also meeting people that are very big in the field and, and, and sort of seeing how they think about things. SOCO celebrates its 10th anniversary in 2020 and has been able to pioneer ocean robotics in the country and build an interdisciplinary approach to explain the links between carbon and climate. The program has developed several new facilities specializing in robotics, bioptics, biogeochemistry, geotraces and CO2 and in turn have created opportunities to design and innovate in an uncharted field. Our research niche is understanding fine-scale dynamics and for that we needed capability that was able to make the measurements at the scales that we needed. Because we've sort of now got to the point where we've achieved the goals of using it in support of our research, we're now expanding beyond the research needs to address societal needs outside the science. We have developed a new PCO2 sensor to measure CO2 in the ocean, which is probably one of the, the best ones available globally. That was developed here by our engineers 
and we've tested it in the Southern Ocean. We are using it as part of our research. We are now starting to market it globally and we've sold our first two units to an Ocean Institute in Germany. So that's an area where we've gone from, again, the value chain of going from basic research towards innovation. And that innovation is about developing our South African intellectual property, really, and using that as a platform to start local manufacturing of advanced high-tech equipment.